Dear students, today we will discuss about the rose diseases and its management. Rose is the most ancient and popular flower grown all over the world. In India, it is commercially grown for several uses. A variety of plant pathogens can attack roses. Moist soil conditions in rose gardens provide an excellent environment for nematodes, crown gall bacteria, and soil fungi. The most common is powdery mildew, but a number of other diseases including rust, black spot, botrytis, downy mildew, and anthracnose may cause problems where moist conditions prevails. Important Fungal Diseases of Rose some of the important fungal diseases of rose are powdery mildew, dieback, black spot, rust, grey malt or botrytis blight, downy mildew, anthracnose, cane canker, root rots, verticillium wilt, and sooty molds. Now let's discuss one by one some of the important diseases of rose. First one is the powdery mildew. Causal organism is Podosphera pannosa variety rose. Now let's see the symptoms of the disease. At first raised blister like areas occur on the leaves and soon become covered with a white to grey powdery growth on leaves, shoots, sapples, buds and occasionally on petals. Leaves may distort and drop. Greyish white powdery patches are seen on the tender leaves. Pedicels and flower buds. Younger leaves of 7 to 10 days old are more susceptible than older leaves. Infected leaves get malformed, flower buds fail to open and plants exhibit wilting symptoms. Now let's see the epidemiology of the disease. The disease is favored by warm and dry weather. The fungus grow well at 18 to 25 degrees centigrade and optimum germination of conidia occurs at 21 degrees centigrade. A night temperature of 15 degrees centigrade and relative humidity of 90 to 99 percent promote optimum production of conidia and their germination. Now let's see the management of the disease. Early detection followed by sulfur fumigation is most effective and economical under greenhouse conditions. Spray wettable sulfur at rate 0.3 percent or carathen at rate 0.07 percent or carbendazim at rate 0.1 percent or dusting with sulfur at 20 kg per hectare is recommended. Foliar sprays of inorganic salts like sodium bicarbonate, dipotassium hydrogen orthophosphate and potassium dihydrogen orthophosphate at 4.5 gram per liter are also effective. Minimal use of nitrogenous fertilizers and irrigation through sprinklers or misty fires. This is about the management of the disease. 
Next important disease is the dieback. Causal organisms are Diplodia roserum, Colletotrichum species, and Alternaria alternata. Now let's see about the symptoms of the dieback. The pruned surface of the twig dries tip downwards and twigs become black in color. The disease passes from the branch twig to the main stem and from there to the root, killing the whole plant. Stem and the roots show browning of the internal tissue. Now let's see the epidemiology of the disease. The fungus persists in dead twigs and the stalks of the withered blooms. Now coming to the management of the disease. Pruning the infected stems 5 to 10 cm below the margin of infection and pasting the pruned ends with body paste or rose paint or 0.1% carbendazim or 0.2% copper oxychloride gives effective control. Use of sprinklers and mystifiers enhance the spread of the disease. Next let's see the black spot disease of rose. Causal organism is the Marasonia rose. Symptoms of the disease. The characteristic symptom of the disease is the appearance of leaf spots which are coal black circular or irregular with black margins and yellow halos. This is about the symptoms. Epidemiology of the disease. Warm wet weather favors the spread of the pathogens. Next is the management of the disease. Remove and destroy infected leaves during the seasons. Remove infected twigs when pruning. Avoid overhead watering. Plant roses in an area with good soil drainage and ventilation. Avoid shady spots in dense planting. Prune out old and diseased canes in the fall of winter. Mulch soil around plants and improve pH if necessary. Next important disease is the rust. It is caused by Phragmidium macronatum. Let's see about the symptoms of the rust disease. Rust first shows itself as small rust colored spots on the undersides of leaves and eventually becoming visible on the upper sides as well as this fungal disease gains control. Infected plants have small orange pustules on the underside of leaves, while the upper sides of leaves may discolor and drop. Next, let's see the management of the disease. Removal and destruction of diseased materials and spraying with Mancojev, lime sulfur, or Gineb. Avoid overhead watering and prune back severely affected cans. During winter, collect and dispose any leaves remaining on the plants and those that have fallen off. Next disease is the gray mold or botrytis blight. It is caused by Botrytis cinerea. Now let's see the symptoms of the disease. Water soak lesions appear on leaves which spread very fast. On flowers, small water soak spots occurs resulting in immature feathering and drying of petals 
which drop ultimately. Next is the epidemiology of the disease. The fungus is always present in rainy seasons when all flowers are not removed. A temperature range of 10 to 25 degrees centigrade and a relative humidity of above 85% are highly favorable for disease development. Now let's see the management of the disease. Destroy old blooms and dead cans to remove as much fungal inoculum as possible. Thinning plants to improve air circulation through the canopy is also helpful. Application of calcium to rosebuds, growth regulators like gibberellic acid and methyl jasmonate reduce the severity of disease. Carbon resume and benomyl at the rate of 0.1%, dicarboxamides and sterol biosynthesis inhibitors are commonly used for controlling the disease. Next important disease is the downy mildew. It is caused by Peronospora sparsa. Let's see about the symptoms of the downy mildew. Initially the symptoms appear as pinkish brown irregular spots on tender lips. The fungus causes chlorotic blotches on the upper surface of the matured leaves, which ultimately become necrotic. The infection on flower buds occurs very early and leads to total dying of flowers. Now coming to the epidemiology of the disease. Relative humidity of about 85% and temperature around 18 degrees centigrade are optimal for multiplication of this fungus. Now let's see how to manage this disease. The disease can be effectively controlled by spraying 0.3% fossil aluminum or 0.2% metalaxyl M jet. All the infected flowers, stems and fallen leaves should be collected and destroyed. Reducing the humidity and overcrowding of seedlings should be avoided. Next disease is the cane or stem canker. Causal organisms are Coniuthyrum species and Botryosphaeria species. Several species of fungi cause cankers on rose cans. Now let's see the symptoms of the disease. Canker usually appears as brown, black or grey areas on a can or stem of the rose bush. These areas can be caused by damage from the deep cold of winter or some other damage to the rose bush. The diseases are more commonly seen on plants stressed through poor management practices such as inadequate nutrition or irrigation. Waterborne spores enter mainly through pruning wounds or other injuries. The disease can affect any part of the stem initially producing yellow or red spots on the bark. This enlarge into brown cankers with dark margins and the bark cracks and become sunken. Now let's see the management of the disease. Maintain plants in a vigorous growing condition. Prune out and burn all infected portions of cans. 
disinfect pruning tools after use on a diseased plants. Avoid injury when cultivating and transplanting. This is about the management of the disease. Next important disease is the root rots. It is caused by Phytophthora cinnamomy and Pythium species. Now let's see the symptoms of the root rots. Roses affected by root rots wilt and may eventually die. The root ball may be water soaked and brown. Common sources of Phytophthora cinnamomy are infected soil or irrigation water that has been in contact with the soil. Pythium affects plants in similar manner but is more often sign that the plants are being stressed in some other way by high salinity, low pH or water logging. Now let's see the management of the disease. Regular application of copper oxychloride or iprodione or diethion to soil may help control the disease. Soil application of FYM along with Trichoderma hygienum is helpful for initial suppression of the disease. These are the fungal diseases. Now let's see some bacterial diseases. Bacterial diseases like bacterial leaf spot or blast, crown gall and hairy root are the bacterial diseases. Now let's discuss about the crown gall. It is caused by Agrobacterium tumefaciens. Coming to the symptoms of the crown gall, crown gall is a bacterial disease that causes abnormal growths or galls on roots, twigs and branches. The galls are often found at the base of a plant or just below the soil surface. Now let's see how to manage this crown gall. Transplant only disease free plants. Avoid wounding during transplanting. Remove infected plants or plant parts as soon as galls are observed. Disinfect pruning and cutting tools frequently. During cultivation of roses, do not injure roots or crown area. Commercial formulation of non-tumorogenic strain of Agrobacterium ryogens that is the K84 strain is being used successfully. Now let's see the virus and virus-like diseases of rose. Rose mosaic, rose rosette, rose flower break, rose leaf curl, rose ring pattern, rose streak, strawberry latent, and rose wilt. This is about the viral diseases. Next, let's see some important nematode diseases of rose. Plant parasitic nematodes include several genera and can be detrimental to plants in different ways from attacking plants, acting as a vector, spreading plant viruses, endoparasites. Many rose growers have observed rose plants that have failed to respond good cultural practices and exhibit yellowing, dwarfing and reduce vitality. These symptoms may be caused by plant parasitic nematodes. Above ground symptoms are an indirect result of root damage. Below ground symptoms include root galls that is caused by root knot nematode root lesions caused by root lesion and ring nematodes and injured root and tips by stubby root 
and other nematodes so this is about the diseases of roses now coming to the conclusion of the topic rose is a important flower grown all over india having a high economic value but hampered its production by several biotic and abiotic factors among the biotic factors diseases caused by fungi bacteria are the important ones diseases like powdery mildew dieback black spot rust and gray mold or botrytis blight are the important diseases in addition to diseases that bacterial fungal and viral pathogens cause roses may display similar damage symptoms resulting from chemical toxicities mineral deficiencies or environmental problems controlling diseases is an important part of rose cultivation use of resistant cultivars or varieties is the best disease control measure or frequent application of fungicide to prevent fungal infections of leaves are required on susceptible cultivars Thank <laughs> you.